sports betting brother, and he bring it up, and thanks for stopping by. My name is Boyd, and I'm a data analyst with Odds Jam at OddsJam.com, where we teach you how to bet like a sharp. And today we're talking about tips to win at sports betting. And over the 30 years I've been betting on sports, I've accumulated some information and uh, try to help you uh, with sharing of this knowledge. And I've got five big tips that if you uh, get some depth, get some knowledge, get some understanding, get good at all of these, you're going to make money. So let's reveal them and get started right now. Okay, guys, here we go. First one out of the gate is time. And uh, we get questions all all the time about how much, you know, when, when's the best time, when's the best place, that kind of thing to find uh, what you're looking for in the sports betting world. And I would compare it and give it a little contrast to if you're, um, you know, if you're doing stock options or you're doing you know, investing in, in anything, uh, just like sports betting is, whether it's real estate properties or whatever, the more time you have to review the opportunities and the market and and uh, what's in front of you, the more time you have to make good choices, make good decisions, and sort of follow your bet plan. And uh, this comes to play where it's all up to you. If you have a lot of time, a lot of ability to monitor the markets and monitor what's going on each day and each different uh, setup, then you're going to have more more opportunities and, and probably do a lot better. Not to say that you can't spend a couple hours a day or even an hour a day. And, and if that's the case, then you sort of have to focus in on um, the markets and the types of bets that you can participate on to make the most of your time and the most profit. So that's what I would uh, come back to is as much as you can, as much as you want. And it's all up to you, just like anything else, whether it's uh, investments or uh, work or uh, family or whatever. It's, uh, it's what you want to put into it. All right. The second tip to win at sports betting is having a lot of options, having a lot of sports books. So if you're just getting started and uh, you have one or two sports books, that's great. But try to add as many as you possibly can. And there's many different reasons. One is obviously pricing options. And we'll go through and show you that in a minute. Because if you have better choices, better options, you're going to have a higher profitability. You're also going to have more diversity in how many um, outs or sports books you can get your money into. And that helps increase your profits. And it also helps um, you know, kind of lay low a little bit to not get banned from some of the sports books as they see your winnings go up by using the odds jam tools. So it's one thing that, um, I should say not banned, but limited, very, very limited. And, um, We'll talk about that more later, but you want to have as many as you possibly can. If you have questions about this, leave us uh, some comments down below because I know everyone's in a, in a different state across the U.S. and, and every state has uh, different options and choices as, as, as the the uh, the um, it's just expanding constantly. So you're going to have something different going on pretty much every year. But there's a there's a handful that if you can get get to use, it's going to help you a, a lot because you're going to have choices and, and they all have a little bit different setup. So it's variety and it's going to be profitable. So make sure you get involved as many as you can. Take advantage of the bonuses and the sign up, um, you know, the welcome packages that they have and also the player bonuses that they have. It's going to be another way to increase your profits um, using the tools that we uh, we show you. All right, guys, here we go into the third one that I highly recommend that you uh, get a extreme depth of knowledge on, and that's the markets, okay? So the markets and the betting markets are something that you're going to use um, to your advantage. Let me let me just pull up here randomly this Washington Commander Chicago Bears game that we have coming up here as we are in the first part of the NFL season. And as you can see here, there's main markets, uh, and, and you can pull this chart down. These are all your markets, okay? So you have point spreads, money lines totals other popular markets you can get involved with are first quarter first half team totals things like that now the player props are another type of market okay and understanding the fact that these markets can react differently certainly with every sports book and pricing but also in the volume and the liquidity of these markets so certainly um, the, the 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 point spread or the total in an NFL game is going to be drastically different than um, you know, a lot of the player props and certainly small college basketball, things like that. So if you imagine markets as sort of like a ship or a boat, right? Maybe you have a, a cruise ship, you have an enormous cruise liner. That's your main market. Okay. That's your that's your point spreads and your totals. Your smaller ships, smaller boats, you know, certainly gonna get into the different markets and then certainly your your rafts and your and your really tidy uh, boats uh, out on the lake are gonna be, you know, your prop bets and your your exotic bets and things like that. So you have futures, you have all kinds of things in the markets. This is all different types of markets. So you're gonna wanna understand how the mainline markets work and sort of what movement in the mainline market means versus say 
uh, what what a, a price change might mean in a, a player prop, which maybe you have an injury, things like that. So markets, 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 and after that, you want to get to understand uh, markets. All right, guys, the next thing I want to highly recommend you get to, uh, to understand and, and, and great knowledge of is is the value of the points and the significance of the points, especially in the NFL markets. Certainly you're going to have some of those go hand in hand in uh, the NBA and in college football, college basketball. But if you go up here to the calculators, there's one kind of significant uh, way you can look at this to see the value. And so here is a, a bet type. Let's say it's a point spread in the NFL. And this will show you here that if the, that point spread was um, at, at positive three, plus three, at even 110, you can see the value here of two and a half. So if you're placing your bets and getting, you know, two and a half, you're paying a higher price. You're paying minus 135 versus the 110. Now, contrarily, you know, if you get three and a half, you're going to have different odds here as well. So if you're betting on the dog or the favorite, it can really make a significant difference in um, what you have outgo as far as your risk and then what you have to win. So this is a good little spot to understand the value. You know, keep in mind here, this is at three. Let's take a look at what happens if you go to four, four and a half. Um, Let's go back to three because I want to show you something uh, relative to the three. This is about a 25 cent difference here from minus 110 to minus 135. So remember that number, 25 cents. If we go to minus, say, four and a half, you see a 17 cent. So it's not quite as, not quite worth as much, right? So the, the four, four and a half, not quite worth as much. And even if you get into the five, five and a half, it's only about a four cents difference. So the, really the five, five and a half point spread is insignificant relative until you get to about the six point differential. Now it's starting to get a little bit bigger, right? Eight cents difference. Let's go to six and a half, see what that does. As you, my, my point of this is now they're at nine cents. Okay, so the six and a half is worth leaving a little bit more. And even the, at the magic number seven in the NFL, you're at about a 14 cent difference in value. So this is what I'm talking about. Understanding the key numbers, the three, the four, the six, the seven, the things like that. And uh, it's very critical in the NFL to understand these values uh, and the points and what you're locking your bet in at and understanding potentially what you're you're missing out or, or um, you know, sacrificing when you when you lock in a bet at a particular number. The number is critical and the number is very, very important. The next little part here, we're going to show you the positive expected value page to where you're going to find the best value and the best number and ideally the best bet. OK, guys, going on what I was speaking of a bit earlier in your in your price points and your and your value, as you can see here on the money line. Odds jam and pinnacle, the, the uh, odds jam perfect lines at a minus 136 and then a plus 122. So it's giving you kind of an indication of what direction, um, you know, things might be on the money line with the Cardinals at Seahawks game. But if you go further down here on the point spread, as I mentioned earlier, that minus three and the minus two and a half has some, some significant difference in value. And so if you're paying minus 115 versus getting it at even at minus 112, that's a very, very small amount, I understand. But there's some significant differences in um what you can find on the market and this is why it's important because you want to get the best value for what you're shopping for at the best price and uh, we'll show you that how that works here shortly all right guys i'm going to scroll down here this is the uh, area where you can take a look at the other alternative lines in the point spread this is just an example just a scenario that you can take a look at when you're assessing the market on a particular game you can see here with the odds jam perfect line as we scroll down right about the even even area of the market is at minus two and a half, minus two, minus three. Right in this area, in the vicinity is where you see the balance, so to speak. And you can see if you go on further, it's minus 121. If the Cardinals are at minus one and a half, they're almost begging you to take them, but you're not getting a very good price even at Fox for that. So in this in this scenario, you'd be paying minus 150 or $150 to win 100 um, if you took the Cardinals minus one and a half. And then the same situation at Tipico or, or – uh, Bovada, you'd be taking the minus 130, which is a big difference. You know what I mean? Uh, paying 130 versus 150, uh, that's a $20 difference or a 20 cent difference, and that's very substantial. So this is where Odds Jam helps you identify not only the correct wager, but the best price, the best book. Okay, so this is really huge because it's telling you, you know, and indicating where you would probably like to be. In this kit situation here, here's a nice, nice, nice 140 at Tipico at plus three and a half on the Seahawks. Whereas uh, Odds Jam and the, and the Pinnacle Line are at minus 153. So if they're confident and they're at this level, you're getting this Seahawks plus 3.5 for a better price than what they're giving it to you. This is probably a good indicator and probably a good thing. So that's, that's what you would do as far as 
identifying the bet, identifying where you want to go, and identifying the best price, which is all the things that Odds Jam does, which mathematically over the course of time is very, very profitable. And that's how you would do a wager, do one bet in a, in a, in a mainline uh, market. All right, guys, here we go into the fifth and uh, final big pillar or component of uh, tips at sports betting, winning at sports betting, and that's bankroll management, money management. You know, how do you do it? Everyone wants to know how much should I bet? How much, you know, should I put in on this? Uh, what, what's a good strategy? And I totally believe in the Kelly criterion, especially if you're starting out. It really helps you understand uh, your bet size, your unit size, you know, when you will or, or won't step out on a particular bet. And using the positive expected value or the, the positive EV page here at OddsJam will help you do that. And you can see here what I've done. Actually, I'm going to show you a quick little area where you can set the parameters for your bet settings. And so, for example, if your bankroll is $1,000, if your your multiplier is one, then you you saw a bit ago that that bet was about twenty dollars, I believe, um, as far as what the amount would be to wager on that game. Uh, that very top one. I should pull it up here in one second. Yep. So if we are on the total runs under five and a half, um, if this is a bet we decided to go forward with, we place that bet at win at plus one thirty five, risking fifteen dollars, and you'd actually hit this plus sign to add that in so we put $15 it tells you how much to wager to follow this Kelly criterion and see so you have the under five and a half runs at win for plus 135 but this is how you would actually help yourself manage your bankroll but let's go back to that that profile setting and let's say that you had a $2,000 um, uh, bankroll that you wanted to play with and we're going to keep it that same one Kelly multiplier so let's say you had $2,000 and what this is going to do is help keep you on track so that you can sustain uh, any any slower periods or any down times that you have relative to wagering and it's going to help you increase your your betting um, during the times structured to where it's it's mathematically most profitable for you so in this case you saw it's thirty dollars gives you some relativity right so if you, if you know that you know it's a two percent edge and you're at a thousand dollar bankroll with a Kelly criterion, you're probably going to risk about 20 bucks. So, you know, another scenario, if you're say four, four and a half percent, you might risk, risk 40 or $50. If your bankroll is higher and you can sustain that for a longer period of time, you would change it there. But this is a really nice tool to use the Kelly criterion to help you manage, you know, and take the guesswork out of it and just follow, uh, follow the mathematical profitability of this, you know, and, and uh, helps you identify the game, helps you identify the amount and helps you stay on track. And uh, you can always, you know, choose to not place a wager on that. If you think plus 135 is something you don't want to do, you can take a look at the market width, take a look at the, all the other information here as far as what's circled as uh, suggested or recommended games and make your own decision. But this is where it's going to help you really um, take a lot of the guesswork out of it. And I uh, cannot speak more highly of the uh, Kelly Criterion and the tool here at, uh, at OddsGem. I wanted to wrap this up too, guys. If you go over here to the far right and you hit this um, button here, the, the, the three dots, if you say, help me make this bet, it's kind of nice. It gives you a little explanation, especially as you're getting started. You know, you're going to say, okay, let's assume I'm betting $100. Well, maybe you're betting $10. It's still going to give you that plus 135, um, you know, odds. Now, the fair value bet, which we have over here, is plus 130, which means that if you take the VIG out and take take the juice out, you know, you have a profit there, a small profit of 2.09%, which, which is really cool because it helps you understand your your profit, your your probability, you know, your chances of winning. And uh, it kind of breaks it down in simplistic forms here. So this is a nice little piece to help you better understand and add more knowledge to your, um, your bet sizing and to kind of make sure you're going to get a good concept and clear concept of what you're getting yourself into when you place this wager as far as expectations. So again, wonderful tool here by Odds Jam and highly recommend it to track yourself and uh, you know keep track of all your wagers here in the bet tracker with. All right, guys, hopefully you find a lot of value in the information we covered today as far as the uh, the time involved, the sports books you need to have, understanding the markets, understanding the value in the various point spreads and uh, points that are being offered by the sports books. And of course, managing it through a Kelly Criterion calculator with Odds Jam and uh, watching your money grow and go as you have mathematically profitable bets using Odds Jam to help you find the best bet. And as always, if you found any value, please give us a like, give us a share, and uh, we'll be back more with more videos just like this to help get you educated and elevated to make money.